Hello everybody, thank you for joining us for this week's Shoesmiths Live video. So today I'm joined by Parmis, Daniela and Hibba and we are going to be talking about client secondments, the client relationship and how it, uh, a client secondment can help both the in-house and private practice teams work together. We will be inviting your questions, so please do type them into the comments through the video um, and we will answer those for you. So to get us started, um, let's introduce ourselves. So, Palmis, over to you. So, I'm Palmis Aberdeen, so there. Um, I'm currently on secondment to Shoesmiths. Um, in terms of background, I um, studied criminology with sociology at Kent University. Um, I went out, out to San Diego for four months while I was studying. Then I did the GDL and then the LPC, um, and then I decided to do my training in-house with six months in private practice. Okay, thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Daniela Forco. Um, I'm currently a paralegal in the commercial property team. Uh, but currently I'm on a six month secondment with the Renault Nissan Alliance. Um, I study law at the University of Portsmouth. Um, and then I joined Shoesmiths as a case handler in the debt recovery department and then went on to commercial property as a paralegal. Hello guys, my name is Hiba Bujawi. I took more the traditional route, studied law at university, I went to City University. Then I went on to do my LPC and then shortly after I joined the Alliance, the Renault Nissan Alliance as a paralegal. And I'll be training, I'll be starting my training uh, in October. Thank you. So, um, so in case you missed it, so Palmis, you are with the Nissan Renault Alliance. Yes. And Hibba, you're with the Nissan Renault Alliance, and Daniela, you're employed by Shoesmiths. So we've got a video for you today that is really all about collaboration, talking about it, but also in essence because we're all sat here in, in different teams but working together. Um, so let's start off by talking about what is a client's equipment. Um, so effectively, it's the opportunity ordinarily for a trainee solicitor to go out and work with one of our clients normally for six months um, and it will be in their in-house legal team working on a variety of matters normally it's commercial and what I mean by commercial it's reviewing uh, contracts um, any advertising material um, and really anything that internal clients may come through the door with um, on the other hand, my experience, I'm obviously a paralegal, so I've been afforded that opportunity. Mm. Um, and also, so comments aren't just if you're in a firm going out to clients, it's, as in Palmer's uh, situation, she is in-house and she's come to a law firm. So, very beneficial and um, opportunity to get commercial experience uh, in a law firm or in a business. So let's just break that down a little bit further if people aren't aware of how this comment works. So Daniela, you're employed by Shoe Smith, yeah. you work for us as a paralegal, but there was an opportunity to go and spend six months um, in private practice at Nissan Renault and work with their legal team. Exactly. Um, but at the end of the six months you come back to Shoe Smith. Or it can happen the other way around. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so we've just talked there about in-house private practice. What does that mean? Um, I guess we should probably start off by what, what the differences yeah. are. Um, I think for me, the main difference is client intimacy. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I think in an author, whilst you are quite intimate with clients and you know you'll have phone calls with them, but it, it's quite structured. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. And so you'll arrange meetings. They'll come in and see you, and it's you know it it is a structured process. Yeah. Whereas in house, it's quite different, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, my experience has been in-house. I work directly with the internal clients. I have my own relationships with the internal clients. Um, whereas in private practice, I've tended to work in the background more um, than I would do yeah. in in-house. Um, it doesn't mean that I'm always in the background. There's been times where I've been on a call when they've introduced me, but I just haven't been as involved. I think that's because you need to form that relationship with the clients first. I think it depends on the client as well. I mean, some of them you might work directly with them, but in-house you're directly working with them all yeah. the time. I mean, yeah, the internal clients are basically your colleagues, so you build a really strong yeah. relationship with them. People just walk in through the door, you'll be kind of reviewing a contract, next thing you know someone's walked through the door and come up with some another legal query. So it's quite interesting to see that different difference. Yeah. And also, 
there, there are different processes in place. So in private practice, you obviously have to record your time in, in-house. I guess it depends on the company and the size of the in-house team. But we don't have to record our time, yeah. so that was a new thing for me. Um, so there's that difference as well. No, exactly. And I think a main difference for me was, um, and not all clients of a law firm are like this, but some of the clients you interact with are quite sophisticated, so they yeah. do have a basic understanding of what you're talking to them about. But in house, um, you know, they um, they're a layman effectively, so yeah. you really need to be able to break things down. Um, and just speak to them as you normally as you normally mm. would. So um, talking about um, working in house, um, so you're part of a legal team that sits within a business, and your clients are the rest of the business. So your exactly. clients could be the marketing team, or it could be the HR team. Yeah. They're coming directly to you for legal advice for their own business. Exactly. And then the reason that you're working with an external law firm like Shoesmith is to, I guess, supplement the legal information that's coming in or to go out for further advice? Yeah, it depends on capacity as well. Um, we're quite fortunate in Grenai Nissan where we try to do a lot of the work in-house. Um, we take a lot of pride in that. Yeah. Um, but here and there where we don't have capacity, we will outsource it to firms like Shoe Smiths. Or there might be times where we're not sure about a legal point, so we'll again ask for a second opinion. A second opinion. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in-house is really varied. Um, one day you might be in a board meeting explaining the changes to GDPR, and the next day you might be sitting with an intern and talking to them about marketing agreements. So it's really varied. Yeah, sense. I was just going to say the work is very varied. So you can do a whole load of things in one day. So we kind of do a lot of marketing. We do a lot of compliance. We, do, we help the sales team, obviously, mm -hmm. achieve their objectives. Um, we even liaise with the HR team on different things, so it's very varied, which is great for us as quite juniors as well. Yeah, yeah. and then coming to do a secondment in-house for six months means your experience then is very specific for you, Palmas, where you've come from that varied environment and then in yeah. something specific. So tell me about the seats that you've had um, at Shoe Smiths. Um, so I did three months in the commercial um, department. Uh, mainly focusing on technology agreements because I've done loads of commercial work in-house but I, I've never really focused on technology so that gave me an opportunity to do that um, in Shoesmiths. There's so many partners there that specialise in technology work. So um, that was the first three months and then uh, that was in the Milton Keynes office and now I'm in the London office doing corporate work which was a completely new area for me because I'd never really done any corporate work in-house so it's really thrown me in the deep end <laughs> and just um, tell me a little about if there's people watching now and they might be thinking well I'm not sure now I kind of maybe want to start my career off in-house in, -house in uh, a business's legal team how might they go about that is it the same process in terms of an application and an assessment center that you might experience in a law firm so, yeah I think it's, it's completely it depends on the company um, in terms of Renault and Nissan I was the first trainee, so it, there wasn't a process in place. Uh, we had discussions about me doing it, um, but for me it was uh, critical that I at least had six months in private practice. Um, we just contacted the SRA and we asked if we could make it happen and we ticked all the boxes and then I just started and um, the head of legal for Renai Nissan is my training principal. So once you start the training, it's very similar, but I would say, depending again on the company and size, in Red Eye Nissan, there's only four of us in the team currently. Um, so the work I am doing in-house as a trainee is really varied. I might be working on contracts one day, and then the next day, data protection, and then the next day, potentially a dispute. Um, whereas in private practice, you have set seats, you wouldn't do a variety of work. Um, so I guess you get to focus on one area at a time. Yeah. Uh, I would say that's the biggest difference. Okay. Well, and I think although there isn't a set process for getting a training contract, for example, because I think of your experience there and you become more valuable over the over the years or over the time that you're there. So you become an asset to the to the to the company and for that reason they just feel like they want to develop you and we've been fortunate with a great manager, so yeah. So, yeah. yeah, fantastic. So, Palm is you're nearly a year into your training contract. Um, Hibby, you're going to start in October. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, and Daniela, you're starting next year as well. So, you're yeah. all about a year apart in terms of your training experience. 
But let's talk a little bit about the relationship that it's enabled you guys to develop between yourselves. So it's, it's been really lovely, actually, because, mm. you know, uh, I think when you work in a law firm and you get to know the partners and the more senior members of the team, they have quite a, a big network, don't they? And they know yeah. lots of people and they know loads of other lawyers. So we're at the start of our journey and whilst I've had the opportunity to forge a relationship with Hibba because I work directly alongside her, um, I've got to know Parmis as well yeah. and I've forged a really great friendship with her. So, you know, when we all qualify, however many years down the line, we know if we need one another for whatever reason, um, you know, we can just pick up the phone. Yeah, yeah. So really beneficial. Yeah. Definitely important to start um, kind of building relationships and networking, um, meeting new people because it's great to have that support system throughout your career. Yeah. So it's great. So here, but you um, are a paralegal at Nissan Renault Alliance. Um, and you had Daniela join your team and do a swap with Palmis. So you lost Palmis for six months and you, you gained Daniela. Um, so how was that for you, um, being a paralegal and I guess um, doing a little bit of training and supervision for Daniela? Yeah, I think it was bittersweet in the, in the beginning because obviously we lost Palmis. But then <laughs> as we got to know Daniela, it was great. Um, she was amazing and obviously as a junior myself, it really gave me the opportunity to train her and supervise her, which I wouldn't usually. I wouldn't usually have that opportunity, yeah. and um, it has really given us a chance to build a relationship. And I think it's really helped the Shoesmiths and the Alliance relationship as well, yeah. which has been really great. Yeah, and I guess um, in terms of the um, knowledge that you've gained, Daniela, out of being um, in the house, how is that going to help your career? But I guess also help Shoesmiths yeah. coming back. I think some of the opportunities I've been afforded at the Alliance, um, and just to explain the Alliance, so we're Renault and, and Nissan, so the in-house legal team yeah. act for both companies. Um, so for example, the, the team have trusted me to deliver advertising and marketing law training. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I would have been afforded that opportunity otherwise until I'm sort of a bit more senior. Mm -hmm. So to be quite junior and to have the opportunity to train um, and to manage the interns, um, it's developed on some key leadership skills um, and, and how to train people because I think you need to be you need to speak in a particular way and deliver information in a particular way for people to understand mm. um, so certainly when I go back and I'm qualified um, and we have junior members of the team coming in I'll be able to train them and help them in a way that I know is gonna help them develop you definitely learn new things about yourself and um, Obviously, I'm, I'm used to having someone supervise me, so to suddenly supervise Daniela and see her progress and also learn a bit about how I am as a supervisor, yeah. that was really great. Yeah. So, um, Palmis, tell me a little bit about when you're working for the Alliance, because um, you're obviously here at the moment at yeah. Shizmas, but when you go back, tell us a little bit about the actual type of legal advice people will be asking you to provide. So your clients, just to reiterate, your clients are your in-house people, HR or marketing teams. So what are they asking you? Um, as I said, it's really varied. Um, predominantly, we work on commercial agreements, so service agreements where we outsource our services, which is a lot. Um, so on a daily basis, we'll be working on one or two service agreements, um, trying to get them through the door. Um, we deal with advertising all the time. so. I didn't know before I joined Renault and Nissan there was so many advertising laws yeah. um, so we need to make sure when we're making claims or we're about to go out with a new promotion that it's legally com compliant, we're not making claims that we can't justify, um, a lot of data protection so when GDPR was coming into place we did a lot of the work in house making sure that we were compliant with data protection um, and we have data protection questions every day um, and people asking us can we do this can we do that can we use uh, customer data for this and that and you know we need to make sure it's all in line with the law and um, sometimes we have employee conversations so HR will ask us questions about processes what they can do what they're not allowed to do and um, some disputes here and there um, so it's really varied okay so for somebody watching this that sees car adverts on the TV all the time um, those TV adverts will have had to pass through the legal team, yeah. you will have had to okay that the things that the advert is saying is correct yeah. and in line with advertising guidelines before it goes out anywhere. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So um, usually um, a lot of the adverts are already filmed and done with 
uh, at central level, so either Japan or Europe, depending on Nissan or um, Renault. So we will get those videos at a later stage and then we'll have to give our comments and then we'll see where that goes. Um, but when things are filmed in the, in the UK or when there's new ideas, we're heavily involved from script stage, they'll yeah. send the script to us, we'll give our feedback and then before they go out to production, again, we'll see the storyboards, we'll feedback on the storyboards and then again, once they film uh, the different scenes, it'll come through legal again and we'll have comments. So, a fun fact, with the automotive industry, we've got our own set rules when it comes to advertising and we're not allowed to make any speeding claims or show any speeding, so those are the sort of stuff that we would watch out for in-house. Okay, cool. So if everything's coming through the legal team before it goes out to the public, do you have any, you must see things that are secrets before yeah. they come out, so yeah. do you have anything that you can tell us about? Not quite, okay. <laughs> but there's a lot of exciting things coming up. We've got new product launches. I won't give any spoilers, um, but watch out. Um, but it's really exciting, isn't it? Because we get to see it before it comes out and we're involved from the very beginning. So as Palmer said, the storyboards, it's really exciting when you see an advert which you've signed off or even asked that it gets amended to be compliant to then be on TV. Mm. And you know you've been involved in that and you've made a difference. So it's really rewarding. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, we've talked a lot about the type of work that you do in-house then. Like you said it's very varied, but quite a lot of commercial contracts, data, marketing. But Daniela, you're not from a commercial law background, no. are you? No. So how did you, well, tell us what team you're in, and then how did you find that going into a different area of law? Um, so, as I said previously, I come from a commercial property background. Um, so to go from that to go in-house, it was quite a stark difference. Um, as we said earlier, the intimacy with the clients, so you know they can just come in, talk to you about something, and you sit down and deal with it on the spot. That was something that I had to learn how to deal with. So certainly in the first month, um, it was quite difficult and it was quite challenging. Um, and obviously the work as well, I've had to learn loads of new things. Um, just go, really going back to basics, isn't it? It's just yeah. contract law basics and understanding what the client wants um, what they want in the contract mm. um, and the legalities around that. But also, I think something that's quite challenging is the commerciality of everything. Yeah. Because to be in, mm. to work in house and to be part of a business, you have to be commercial. And being commercial is not something that you learn. Yeah, I, I always used to speak yeah. to you about this. You yeah. need to be, the legal advisor needs to be more of a business partner. Yeah. So when you're given advice, it needs to always be commercial, practical and mm. risk-based. We always talk about this. Yeah. So what's the risk that we're willing to take? If we're not, then what, what actions are we going to take? And always that no is not an answer. So we always yeah. think of alternatives and just make things happen. Yeah, so if the yeah. business wants something to happen, you've got to be helping that along, but in the right way. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, we need to be careful because we will be will always be compliant. Yeah. But we just need to make sure that we kind of achieve the um, objectives yeah. by taking the correct decisions. But I must say, with, with Shoesmiths, they are very commercially minded as well. Um, from just doing my technology commercial seat, I saw that the partners, the different lawyers, they're always trying to find a commercial solution for their clients, even though they're not in-house lawyers the commercial side comes then first, then the legal side. Mm -hmm. And I think that's another difference though. Whilst they they do think really commercially, which we're really grateful for, yeah. um, the work I think in private practice is a little bit more detailed. So ordinarily in private practice, you would spend more time doing research on that area of law, and then you try and come up with the commercial solution around it. Whereas in-house is so fast-paced, mm -hmm. the internal clients, they, they don't want to wait for an answer, they want the answer there and then. Yeah. So sometimes we don't go into as much yeah. detail. Um, so there's that difference as well. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm just going to mention that if you want to ask a question, you can just type it into the comments below and we will answer those live for you now. Um, I'm just going to have a look and see if anything has come in yet. I don't think anything has. Um, so yeah, so do type your comments and we will answer those. So um, I've got a couple of kind of more personal questions to ask you all really. So Carmis, we'll start with you. So tell me one thing that you found surprising about coming to Shoesmiths. 
Um, I was really nervous to come into private practice. I had that stereotypical perception that it would be a very stuffy culture because I always thought private practice is going to be really stuffy. Um, but I was really pleasantly surprised. Um, the partners are so approachable, um, especially in the Milton Keynes office. They just made, made you feel at home. I could go up to them and joke around with them at any point or ask them any questions. I didn't have to wait my turn to be able to speak to them. Um, so it, it's just a really, really friendly culture. Um, we, we were very lucky in-house in the sense that our manager, James, he's fantastic. He gives us all the time in the world but, and he teaches us so much. And I had exactly the same, especially Milton Keynes, um, my training principal, Sebastian, and my supervisor, Andy. They helped me so much, both in my work and socially. They, they were just there, and I didn't expect that in private practice. So I was really pre pleasantly surprised. Okay, that's great. Um, <clears throat> so, Hibber, tell me something that surprised you about having an external uh, paralegal coming into your team. Um, in the beginning, as I said, it was bit bittersweet. I, I didn't know what to expect. Um, but Daniela came and, and she was very approachable, very friendly. I think the first time we met, we got on straight away, Good. which is great. Uh, you always know, don't you, whether you click or not. Yeah. So we clicked straight away. And Daniela was able to kind of bring her law firm expertise and knowledge. Um, and she, you were majorly helpful in the property side of things. Um, but in the commercial side, we, we really helped and, and we tried to make it as, as kind of a good learning experience for you. And Daniela, so you've only got a couple of weeks left or a month or so yeah, left in, yeah. in house in the yeah. Alliance before you come back yeah. to Shoesmith. So um, tell me something surprising. Um, so there's two things actually. So, first off, I wasn't sure how I was going to find commercial law because I'd, I'd never done it before. Um, I also haven't done my LPC, so I didn't really know what it was about and I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. And I was pleasantly surprised when I joined the team. Um, I love it. It's so interesting. It's so vast. Um, people can come to you about anything. And the things that you learn in commercial um, and the skills that you develop, they're so wide varying and they'll help you yeah. in everything that you do. So that's one thing that surprised me. But also, I think the environment that I've come from has been quite nurturing, supportive, quite uplifting and empowering. But I've had the exact same treatment in-house. So I've been just as supported and just as empowered as I have when I left you, Smith. So yeah. I think our um, values are sort of aligned in that respect. Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so at Shoesmith, we do do quite a lot of automotive work. Um, and uh, people that are watching might know that. And they might be wondering, what cars do you drive? <laughs> so um, I drive a Renault Megane. Yeah. I drive a Renault Clio. Okay. Love so Daniela, do you drive? I don't drive. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got a driving license. Exactly. I've got a driving license. And she <laughs> will be driving soon. She will be driving soon. And I drive a Nissan Qashqai. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that I work at Nissan Renault. Really. <laughs> but clearly a supporter. Um, okay, perfect. And um, so I've done a lot of asking questions, but is there anything that I've not asked about that you would like to talk about that I've not covered? Um, I think it's just really important for people to remember, like if you're thinking about moving to do a secondment or if you've got a training contract and it's something you're thinking about, definitely do it. E you know, even if it's something you're thinking, oh, I definitely don't want to do that, I think you should, just for the experience, because you don't know until you try it. Mm. Um, I mean, the same thing happened with me. I, did, I wasn't sure about commercial or I didn't think I would like it, but I actually love it. And you're, um, like you said, you haven't even done your LPC yet, exactly. you start your training contract next year, yeah. so you've, you've already got this under your belt before you even start your training, which is really a really great experience yeah. to go, go into your training with. Very fortunate. Yeah. I think, I think what's important... Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's the automatic lights. <laughs> um, what's important, I think, is to grab any opportunity that you get. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know where it will take you, you don't know what skills you'll get taught, you don't know who, who you will meet. And for this, it's been amazing, I mean, from both sides. Yeah, and I think just to echo that is, um, I, I didn't think going into another commercial department, even though I wanted to focus on technology, that there was room for me to learn anymore, because 
in-house, you're given so much responsibility from the beginning that I thought I knew it all, which was really ignorant of me, and I learned so much. So I think if you do get that opportunity to be thrown in the deep end, especially with corporate for me, I've never done it before, but there's so much that I've learned that I wouldn't have known previously. So I think don't get too comfortable. If there is an opportunity, take it. Yeah, perfect. The only thing I guess we haven't touched on much, but that I would like to cover, and I think it's really important, but what about like logistics and locations and things like that? So um, the Alliance is based in Rickmansworth, around near the M25. And then Palmer, you talked about being in our Milton Keynes office. Today we're filming in our London office, which is where you're now based. And Daniela, you were originally in our Reading office. So there's a lot of different locations going on there. So let's talk about firstly, Daniela, so you're based in Reading. You're now in Rickmansworth at the Alliance. They're not really, or it's quite a far commuting distance. So tell me about the support that Shootsmas gave you in terms of um, travelling yeah. or accommodation. Yeah, so obviously it, it, it would be very difficult to commute each day um, to Rickmansworth from Reading. Um, so in the same way that the firm would for a trainee solicitor, I've been very fortunate in that um, I've been supported in terms of accommodation um, and all the utilities and everything that comes with that. Um, so everything is paid for, um, which is great because it's allowed me to come here, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to do it. Yeah, so, so essentially you, um, you're not out of pocket in any exactly, way, but yeah. you're able to get that opportunity and experience exactly. and Shoesmith covers those yeah. um, logistical nightmares, I guess, of, yeah. of moving and things. And then at the end of your contract, you'll move back to Reading? Move back to Reading, start the LPC. Yeah, yeah. okay. And what about you, Palmer? So having been based in Rickmansworth and then spending time in Shoesmith, Milton Keynes and London offices, what are you doing? Are you travelling? Um, I am travelling. So for Milton Keynes, I had an hour journey both ways. Um, and again, like you, I've been really fortunate in that my HR team um, at Renault, they've been very supportive. Um, I was able to keep my company car, so I wouldn't have been able to travel to work every day. Um, trains just wouldn't have been affordable, so I kept my company car. Um, I still keep the same benefits as I used to, as if I'm still a Renault employee. Um, and my HR team have made sure that they've stayed in touch with me to make sure that I have been supported. And mm -hmm. my manager, he, he speaks to me on a weekly basis to see how I'm going on. So there is that support network for you. And equally, I've had... Robin um, and Nathan from Shoesmiths who have been checking on me to make sure that I'm adjusting well. So Yeah. So support from both sides sounds yeah. fantastic. I think um, everything that you've said is really positive and I don't even think I need to ask the question but it sounds like you're going to be, um, you've had a lovely time but you're going to settle straight back in um, to the Alliance when you go back and Daniela Sounds like you don't want to yeah. come back to Shoes. <laughs> Sounds like you love it. Sounds like you've never asked you. Um, but you've got to come back to ask to do your training contract. Um, so any final words of advice for anybody that's watching that's thinking, actually this comment might be for me? Um, I think just remember the best way to think like a client and be able to advise in the way that a client would want you to is to do a secondment mm -hmm. because you're literally living, breathing what the business does and aspires to do every day. So, yeah. And any question? I think for you, any questions that you had are working in Choosemas when you joined the alliance, it all kind of came together and you understood exactly. why. Exactly. I understand now why clients ask certain questions and how they want the advice to be delivered. Mm. Um, so, really beneficial for me and also obviously beneficial for the alliance. Um, so, really positive all round. Yeah. Well, we haven't had any questions, <clears throat> excuse me, come through um, on the video today. But if you do have any questions, you can um, still comment on the video and we will get back to you. Or you can email us at joinus at shoesmiths.co.uk and we will get an answer to you. Um, be sure to head over to our events page on Facebook where we've got lots more Shoesmiths Live topics uh, coming up and the dates are on there. Um, in particular, we're really excited about interviewing Simon Boss who is Shoesmith's CEO, and that is taking place in October. So if you go onto the events page, you can hear interested and going, um, so you don't miss out on watching that video. Um, I just want to say a massive, absolutely massive thank you to Palmis, Daniela, and Hibba for joining us today. Um, huge thank you to our client, The Alliance, and um, yeah, for putting all this together. Thank you so much, guys. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.